I look into the future, my darlings. And for you, I see something grotesque. It will sicken and disgust you. It's me! <laughs> Tonight's tale is a sickening stab at suspense about a gold digger who wanted big bucks to buy baubles and bangles. Look out, Kathy. I see you just might buy the big one. <laughs> did buy the big one, and that Charlie was a cut-up. Still, he wasn't sad in the end. You see, when Charlie got his just desserts, he requested seconds. <laughs> and now, I predict the future. Next week, you'll be in the same time, same place, same station for another hideous, hateful hall of horror. Welcome, horror hooligans. This is your shiver chef. It's disgusting what people will do to stay young. What's the matter with you? Want to keep that 90 pound corpse for the rest of your death? Keep pumping. Now I tell the story. Tonight's story is about an old man who finds a new wrinkle in a fountain of youth. A twisted tale that we call the switch. Poor Carlton. Looks like he blew it. But no pain, no gain. I like a body that's nice and strong. It's your lucky day, fella. We want to pump you up. <laughs> you know, kiddies, after a night of slithering through the sickening slime of my crawly crypt, I take a tip from the Marquis de Sade. He likes to unwind with a little red-hot poker. <laughs> Tonight's tale from my collection of terror tomes is about a couple of real sharpies who'll do anything for a stab at the jackpot. So, ante up, fellas. The game's about to begin. I've heard of giving someone the finger, but this is ridiculous! But at the risk of going out on a limb, I got to hand it to Krebus and Fawny. They'd do anything to elbow their way to the top. Dinner time! <laughs> Welcome to my cozy crypt. Have I got a story for you? A tacky tropical tale of love and lust, greed and ghouls, and my personal favorite, death. <laughs> but I'm warning you, it's not a pretty picture. So, Pack up your passport and prepare for this torrid tale of putrefaction in paradise. I'm sure you'll find it appealing. <laughs> Pretty hard to dig up. <laughs> anyway, looks like poor old Logan's got himself a zombie. I think I'll have one too. Hello, party animals. 
Are you ready to bop till you drop? Dead, that is. <laughs> Tonight, I've chosen a fiendish little tale from my hold of moldy oldies. We've been invited to an anniversary celebration of holy deadlock. You know, to love and to perish. For richer, for horror. In sickness and in stealth. Till death do us part. <laughs> this is one anniversary the husband will never forget. That's what I call dragging your wife to a party. <laughs> I guess Richard was the guest of horror after all. Just goes to show you what can happen when you let your imagination run away with you. Here's to your bad health. See you next time, boys and ghouls. <laughs> Tonight's 
little riff is rife with sex, death, and rock and roll. Now that's entertainment! <laughs> You'll meet a putrefied promoter of pop with an ear for a hit. I don't want to kill it for you. Let's just say we come into the story just when his career is getting real hot. <laughs> well, headbangers, wasn't that one a real smash? I know it was for Miss Kilbasa. <laughs> For Marty, he was right about that noise in his head. He probably wished he was deaf, but he got deaf instead. Well, until next time, Fright fans. Ears looking at you. <laughs> she loves me. She loves me not. She loves me. She loves me not. What do flowers know about love, anyway? Well, hello there, boils and ghouls. Just getting in the mood for tonight's tawdry tale. A story of love and lurid lust in the dust. <laughs> sure to arouse the sickies amongst you to some heavy breathing. A tale. Four-sided triangle. That young lady certainly knew how to make her point. But what a shame for poor George and Louisa. They thought they had their labor problems all sewed up. But Mary Jo formed her own union with the Scarecrow. <laughs> and just when George was going to reward Mary Jo for all her hard work, with a big bonus. <clears throat> now that is definitely not what you call safe sex. Tune in next week, kiddies, for another terribly traumatic tale. <laughs> Good evening, fear fans. You're just in time. Contents, One Ventriloquist Dummy, Hack Me Novelty Company, Battle Shriek Michigan. Oh, goody. Watch this, kiddies. You won't see my lips move. You know why? I don't have any. Well, hello, Dickie. Would you like me to tell a tale from the crypt? No thanks, Scarecrow. And how about sitting a little closer to the fire? That's better. Now I can dole out a diseased little ditty about the schizophrenic nature of showbiz and how to hack your way to the top. So grab hold of your guts, kiddies, cause tonight you get to rub elbows with the ventriloquist's dummy. What do you say, folks? Billy deserves a big Hand, don't you think? Sheesh, the thing some folks will do to get ahead in show business. Oh well, next time somebody tells Billy he's no dummy, he can say, Wanna bet? <laughs> oh, hello there, Fright fans. I've just been sitting here waiting for my blood pack to harden. My cosmetologist said I was starting to look a little lifeless. <laughs> Much better, eh? Which reminds me, tonight's poison parable is about a couple who take their appearance very seriously. Needless to say, they're going to end up trying to save face. I call this one Judy, you're not yourself today. I still think diamonds are a girl's best friend. You'll be glad to know that that witch gave up door-to-door -door sales and joined the Peace Corps. 
poor Donald. You can't really blame him. He was only trying to give his marriage a shot in the arm. And in the leg. And in the head. <laughs> Sometimes I crack myself up. <laughs> Until next time, kiddies. Pleasant screams. <laughs> Sports fiends. You know, dead people like me make excellent point guards. When we can't get off a shot, we simply pass. Away, that is. <laughs> Speaking of which, allow me to be your fear leader for tonight's halftime show. It's a putrid playlist about my personal favorite sport, being a mortician. I fittingly call it fitting punishment. Well, looks like old Ezra learned raising a teen is no walk in the graveyard. Now he's going to need one of his cheap coffins for himself. That's what he gets for having a name like Ezra. As for poor Bobby, he got a pretty nasty case of athlete's foot, didn't he? I mean, I've heard of Footloose, but yikes! Oh well, I guess the next best thing to making a goal is becoming a ghoul. Right, kitties? <laughs> it'll give you an inkling of what tonight's fungusy photo play is about. Because long before my eerie offerings appeared on your silver screen, they were a magazine called... Get a load of this. Tales from a Crypt. So tonight, let's take a behind the screams look at a struggling artist named Jim Corman, who one day got a little too drawn in to his work. Was it a little too graphic for you? Oh well, next thing you know, Jim and his new gal pal will be walking down the easel together. I guess you learned that life imitates art after all. As for poor Mildred, she learned that death imitates art too. Maybe if she'd been nicer to him, she wouldn't have ended up a monster piece. <laughs> Isn't he just so cute that you wanna? Whoops. <laughs> Crip Keeper here, kitties. And speaking of kitties, tonight's sickening saga should be subtitled A Tale from the Crib. Yes, dear fans, I've got a real nursery crime for you this time. It's all about the humble beginnings of my favorite horror hero. So call the babysitter and break out the bath bags as I narrate a nauseating novella with a very special place in my heart. I affectionately call this one Lower Birth. Good Lord. <laughs> to pieces. <laughs> I was 
a cute little terror type, though, wasn't I? As for Enoch and Myrna, I guess you figured out by now where I get my good looks. Old Two-Face was my daddy, and the mummy was my mommy. <laughs> Oh, if they'd only lived long enough to see me become a star. We never even got a chance to play hide and go shriek together. <laughs> just had quite a scare. I actually thought my heart was beating again. <laughs> Tonight's twisted tale is a villainous voyage, a murderous medical madness that screams out the consequences of getting too nosy with your neighbors. So the next time you stare into someone's window, remember, curiosity killed the cat. <laughs> Where's Houdini when you need him? <laughs> well, that was quite a scream, wasn't it, kids? And what a surprise for poor Dr. Trask. There's a villain with a heart. A cat, that is. <laughs> Just when he thought he was going to silence Susan forever, she walked all over him. I suppose you're wondering what became of Susan. If you give me a scream, I might just tell you. <laughs> Hi, Mom. <laughs> I just love home videos, don't you? Especially when the home is haunted. Tonight's twisted tale, my dear couch potatoes, is filed under T for television. Or should that be... Terror. Mr. Horton Rivers is about to find out, so stay tuned to this totally titillating tube. <laughs> oh, that Horton. He's a real swinger. He hangs out in all the right places. No wonder he's such a hit on live. Or is it dead TV? <laughs> Are you alone tonight? Well, consider yourself lucky. There could be two of you, and imagine what a frightmare that could be. <laughs> Just a reflection. Not so for tonight's stars, Frank and Eddie, two brothers who are touchingly close. When a woman tries to come between them, she finds herself caught in a tangled web of jealousy and intrigue. I think you'll find it a twinning combination. So without further ado, I bring you my brother's keeper. Well, maggot meisters, how's that for a cheeky little tale? <laughs> Frank Shaw picked a deadly time to sever all thighs with his brother, and poor Eddie suffered the unkindest cut of all. A real split personality! <laughs> What? So where's the twist? And I had such great expectations. Ah, now here is a story you can sink your teeth into. A toothsome tale of Tommy Rot, guaranteed to scare the dickens out of you. Lean in, Fright fans. I'm going to let you in on the secret. Finally, the kid gets the upper hand, or should I say, the upper paw. Just when mom and pop are about to satisfy their sweet tooth, Theodore decides to 
Move down something besides sweets. <laughs> well, that's all for now, kitties. As one cow said to the other as they headed off to slaughter, till next we meet. <laughs> <laughs>